The debate surrounding circumcision is literally older than the Bible. It's thought to be the world's oldest planned surgery and it actually predates recorded history. In today's video, I will not be settling this discussion, but I will provide you with medical arguments for and against circumcision. It's up to you to draw your own conclusions based on the available evidence. So make sure to watch the whole video so you don't miss any important information. And for those of you in meeting for the first time, my name is Raoul, I'm a medical doctor from the Netherlands and it's my mission to medically educate you so you can make healthier decisions. So let's get learning. So before we dive into the arguments for and against circumcision, it's important to discuss and explain what circumcision actually is. It's a procedure where the foreskin, which is the skin covering the tip of the penis, is removed from the penis. In first world countries, this all starts with a doctor's appointment. You go to your doctor and your doctor will explain the benefits as well as the dangers of circumcision. He will explain the surgical procedure and when you agree, the circumcision can be planned. Fast forward to the day of the procedure, then the first step is disinfecting the penis and the surrounding area. Afterwards, an anesthetic will be injected into the base of the penis or it will be applied on the penis as a cream. Next, the foreskin is extended with the forceps, after which it will be surgically removed. This procedure will usually take about 10 to 20 minutes. Afterwards, when it's all done, the penis will be covered in petroleum jelly as well as antibiotic cream and it will be bandaged. Furthermore, it will take about 7 to 14 days for the penis to heal. The tip of the penis will likely be sore at first and might look red, swollen and bruised. So be careful to avoid putting pressure on the penis, especially the first few days. In addition, it's safe to wash the penis after the procedure, but do not go for a long bath or for a swim these first few weeks. It's also often advised to frequently reapply a dab of petroleum jelly on the tip of the penis. It's also important to know that complications from the surgery might arise, and in these situations you should contact your doctor. So if you can't pee within 12 hours after the circumcision, if you experience persistent bleeding or if you experience a wound infection, then please contact your doctor. You might have a wound infection if you experience a fever, if you have increased amounts of pain, if the penis is red or swollen, if the penis throbs and or if there is a foul smelling drainage from the tip of the penis. So we all know now what a circumcision is, but you might wonder why is it performed? Here it is important to know that about half of all circumcisions worldwide are performed to prevent future medical problems. This is called prophylactic healthcare. You see, circumcisions are associated with a reduced risk of certain sexual transmitted infections, certain urinary tract infections, as well as it reduces the risk for a specific rare type of penile cancer. This also includes cancer-causing forms of the human papilloma virus, HPV, and it strongly reduces HIV transmission among heterosexual men within a high-risk population. It's actually so effective that the World Health Organization recommends circumcision as part of their HIV prevention program. They recommend this mostly in high-risk areas. However, the effectiveness of using circumcision to prevent HIV in the developed world is still unclear. In addition, circumcision could also be used to treat other medical problems like a phimosis. This is a medical condition for a foreskin which is so tight that it's difficult or impossible to retract. As you can imagine, this could lead to inflammation of the penis in the long term. Luckily, this is a problem that could be solved with circumcision. The same is true for men dealing with chronic urinary tract infections, as circumcision can also lower your chances on developing new urinary tract infections. The last medical reason for a circumcision is that it makes it simpler to wash the penis, which increases hygiene levels. Besides medical arguments for circumcision, there are of course also social, ethnical, religious and cultural reasons for circumcision. It's especially common among certain Jewish and Islamic families, as well as certain Aboriginal tribes in Africa and Australia. Which brings us to my favorite procedure, which is asking you to click the like and subscribe button. No, all jokes aside, these videos cost me a lot of time and effort to make and I hope you're learning a lot. If you do, then please click the like and subscribe button. This will help out the channel tremendously and in return, you will get a notification each week for a new awesome video. It's free, you can always check your mind. Let's continue. So, circumcision can make a lot of sense in some situations, 
However, every advantage has its disadvantages, and it's important to know the possible risks and dangers so you are properly informed. First of all, circumcision is regarded a safe procedure when performed in a sterile clinical setting, in a hospital, by an experienced surgeon or a urologist. Nevertheless, when performed on babies, there still is a complication rate of about 1.5%. For older children or adults, this is even close to 6%. And these percentages get even higher for circumcisions which are not performed in a hospital by an experienced doctor. Common complications can be persistent bleeding, an infection, removing too much or too little skin, and a stenosis. A stenosis is an abnormal narrowing of the tube to reach your pee, your urethra. This narrowing could lead to difficulties peeing, which ultimately could to urinary tract infections and kidney problems. This is the reason why most European medical organizations consider the benefits of a circumcision not worth the potential risks. In addition, in older children or adults, this procedure often needs to be done under general anesthesia, further increasing the risk for complications as well as lengthening the time which is needed to recover. Which brings us to the conclusion. There are some health benefits from undergoing a circumcision, but it can also cause certain complications, and the rate of these complications get higher and higher the older you are. In addition, cultural and religious motives are often also very important when making the decision if circumcision is right for you. And lastly, keep in mind that circumcision does not affect your fertility nor the sexual pleasure you might experience. I hope you know everything you need to know now about circumcision, but if you have any questions left, let me know in the comment section and I will do my best to answer each and every one of them. For those of you that can't get enough, check out the Instagram as well, at How to Medicate, or check the playlist with more awesome medical videos in the description. If you did enjoy the video, if you did learn something, then it would mean the world to me if you click the like and subscribe button, and in return, you will get a notification each week for a new awesome medical video. I will see you next week with that new video. Bye bye. Thank you.